I'll start off. Hello everybody, it's Dr. Zeno with 15 Minute Fuel, which is 15 minutes a. We're gonna feel your mind, your body, and your future. I'm here with a, a good friend of mine from school that I actually used to watch when I was a teenager, AKA Planet Stasiak, Dr. Sean Stibich. Hey Chris, it's great to see you, man. It's been a long time. In fact, I was just thinking about it. I just, the first people I, I was thinking of you and Whitney, and the first people I see at the parking lot here are you and Whitney came up, so go figure. No, man, it was good. We just yeah. we just touched base not too long ago. Yeah. Through email, you know? Yep. Um, and you know, it's funny, I haven't seen you. I was just thinking about this. I haven't seen you since, I think, 2005. So it's been 12 years. I, mean, I can't 12. even start. Can you believe that? Really? I mean, it was in that plaza before these <laughs> yeah, guys the took off. Well, we worked out at the ranch. It's where um, I met you, yeah. I believe, uh, you and Whitney. And then, of course, I'd run into you at Kroger all the time late at night. Yeah, that's right. Like, Kroger Royce, like, runs. Right? Yeah. And then, uh, but the, what, I'm, what, what I specifically remember is when you guys were getting ready to leave for the woodlands. I don't think you had an idea, you had a vision. Mm -hmm. But, and I was like, okay, well, good luck. Let's stay in touch. But... Uh, you know, I told you out there just a while ago, uh, and I acknowledged Chris for just his perseverance, his vision, his passion, and you know, the everyday, you know, practical steps it took to become a success story and to, to to treat so many people and better the quality of so many lives. And to me, I just thought it was it was just awesome. It just came around full circle right in that parking lot. So I, we we left in a parking lot. And we met yeah. up in a parking lot. So yeah, and I think figure. this all started up again. I can't believe so many years it went. So uh, what I want to talk to you about today, and I think what everybody would love because, uh, and it's something I always wondered, and I always think about you, I would definitely say multiple times per month for this, for what I'm about to talk about now. And I, wa I want you to help me understand the mindset of this. So when you were in WWF, WWE, and I remember watching you, and I, I remember I went to one of the ones in Orlando where you were there, you know, and he would come out, the music's pumping, man, you just, you're just top physical form, and you come out and there's a crowd. There's thousands of people going freaking nuts. I remember one of the people would like spill their beers, like they're out of control. And how and how many days a year did you do this? Like 200? Yeah, about 200. When I was at WCW, I traveled a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I would say about 200, around 200 days a right. year. So, you know, you were on these loops, four day loops. You get home maybe for a day and a half throw your laundry in, get a couple workouts in, sleep in your own bed maybe a night or two, and then you're back on the road again. And then, but the thing is, but that that feeling of like, you come out and just, just the, the adrenaline and just the, the praise of the people and the fans. And what I tend to see is you always hear the, the after stories. And I'm sure you've guys seen all the after stories of After the Ring. Uh, uh, Mickey Rourke did a movie, all these other things. Right. But it's like, there's a massive depression when these guys leave it. But what you did was so honorable is that you didn't go down that road. I'm sure you could have been tempted to, but you went and did something even better and you became a doctor chiropractor to help people. But let me know, but you still had to go through that. I mean, like you walk into a school and people are like, your student so-and-so, and you're like, you know what, man? I used to come out and freaking, yeah. you know, like 200 yeah. times a year. So tell me this this thing. Sure. Tell me this, uh, how, how? Yeah, I got a perspective on that. Yeah. So uh, what I, when I um, left WBE in 2002, I just, there was two careers that I always aspired right. to be part of. One was to take out from my father, the late great Stan the Man Stasiak, right. and then the other was to uh, become a chiropractor. Uh, because I always questioned myself whether I could, could I take someone's head in my hands and actually adjust a, a cervical spine because I had lived that lifestyle because I was beat up all the time, Chris. I you know, all the my time. Amateur career, yeah. just even weight training. You know, we beat our bodies up. You know, um, and then of course professional wrestling. Even though it's you know it's, people know it's choreographed, oh, but man, man. It, it's the most brutal thing I've ever done in my body. So I lived I lived in a chiropractic office and I became intrigued with the profession, with the art, the philosophy, the healing, and I wouldn't have been able to perform at the level that I did if I would not have adopted that lifestyle. So I went back to school, I started all over again. Uh, yeah, it was kind of odd, you know, being in a classroom yeah. with kids about, you know, 10 years younger than me at least, and hey man, we played that video game, I used your character, I'm like, yeah. oh great, okay, <laughs> let me take my biology notes, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it was a transition, you know, yeah. it, was, it was tough. And for me, uh, honestly, I think at that stage of my life, and we had, I had mentioned this to you a while ago, is that I think for me, I was a little bit in an identity, it, uh, I would say crisis, but it was a, a transition. It took me a few years, Chris, for me to finally settle into who is Sean, who am yeah. I? Because for years, you know, you live through this character vicariously. You, 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 I've always, I was always genuine and real, but 
there's still this element that plays on your psyche that when yeah. you're in the real world now, you're back going to school. It's very humbling, right? But at the same time, it was the, the biggest blessing I ever could have um, experienced because I, I wouldn't be who I am today. And, you know, I mean, I've had my, my shares of, of ups and downs and try. We all have, right? Um, but it's, it's, it's brought me to who I am today, and I can keep that. I look at that now, professional wrestling, as a chapter of my life and as a suit that I once wore. And the, the funny thing is, um, is that even till this very day, I will still tell you, for the right business, for the right storyline, I don't know if you've seen this um, video storyline that I put together, but I would, I would consider going back on a very part-time sure. basis to accomplish one thing that has not been done in the WWE yet, and that's to become the first father-son duo to ever hold the WWE title. It's never been done. I'm still able and capable. I'm in sure. shape. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things uh, where uh, I've accepted the fact that I may never go back, and that's fine. If this is going to happen, it's going to be it's going to be divine's will, and it's going to be for the right reasons. But I still get that itch, man. I hear a crowd. If I go to a stadium, if I go to a football oh, game, yeah. and I hear that roar of the crowd. I'm like, I get goosebumps. I get fired up because I'm so. When I hear, it's like a it's trigger. A state it's trigger. A signal. Yeah. yeah, I want to. You know, probably for you with bodybuilding, right? But but I, I I think everybody gets that. And and you know, we talk about hero and secret identity now. So my, the secret identity we talk about is most people they're they're living this secret identity that's just. They're just, they're just conforming to mediocrity society. But your secret identity, watch this, um, Planet Stasiak and Phobia, actually, even that actually was became your secret identity for the true hero which you are now. So it was almost the opposite. So him putting on the suit became the secret identity for the true hero that he is now. Where most people, they're looking, so there's multiple secret identities. So I just love the twist there that, yeah. that Stasi, Planet Stasiak and Phobia was the secret identity, and, and or like you said, an exaggerated part of your personality. Sure. And now you're this, this very humble, loving, um, you're still using your gifts and talents. That's a great thing, like you're using the gifts and talents of entertainment, um, crowd presence, speaking capabilities, influencing, in a way that's truly helping people uh, like never, never before. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm always learning, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm always refining myself, and, and it was so. Just to, uh, to to touch up on phobia. So phobia was a character that I made up. You made, yeah. Uh, I'm a big kid. I'm yeah. a big Halloween. Uh, you know, I love Halloween, so I created this character that became, I was a big uh, fan of like guys like Ultimate Warrior and Sting and all the, the face yeah, yeah. paint and the theatrics, the great bodies and the co colored comic book characters come to life, and I, I want to emulate myself. So I use that as a, a speaking um, uh, tool for anti-bullying and, and uh, safe trick or treating for kids in Boise, yeah. Idaho when I went to Boise State. And I sent that off after my dad had passed in 97 because I had never had any formal training. Yeah. But they, they loved the character, they loved the charisma, and you know I had the, the physical presence, I guess, and an athletic background. And of course, my dad's name mm -hmm. didn't hurt it, opened up the door to at least have a tryout. Yeah. We never used Phobia as a wrestling character. I know. I and, know. And, and, and Phobia, though, for me, I'm just glad we didn't because I've reserved Phobia. He's the counterpart to Dr. Sean. Yeah. You have you know you have Dr. David Banner in the Incredible yeah, yeah. Hole. You got uh, Bruce Banner in Batman. With now you have Dr. Sean and Phobia. Wait a second, I'm not supposed to say anything. That was yeah. like, oh, I know Phobia. I'm Dr. Sean. I, I, Phobia's a good friend of mine. Okay, but getting back, uh, Planet Stasiak was one character that um, I played. But, you know, I played a lot of different little aliases. But, um, you know, the Planet Stasiak character was, it was something that we could never get on the right uh, page with, with WBE. Yeah. They didn't quite, the vision I had, and went. Vince, I know, you know, they, they just, tried different things like you used to run into, you run into the night armor and just like, yeah, well, that, that was just Sean Stasiak, yeah, yeah, yeah. idiot Sean yeah, Stasiak, yeah. running into milk trucks and yeah. I was the wildy coyote yeah, yeah. of the WWE. You were, you were. And, and you know, at the time, it's funny because it used to really, it, it bothered me deep down. So it's like, man, these guys don't have something better for me to do. But I took it, and it's like taking a role in a movie, taking a role in a, in a, on a TV show. And, and honestly, I look back at that, and I got to rub, you know, shoulders with The Rock. Yeah. And, you know, his, man, you see what he's doing in his life and what he's done over the years. So I look at back at it now in a humble sense and go, you know, instead of this sense of entitlement that maybe I've had, and, and, and rightfully, I mean, people say, well, rightfully so. You come from a, uh, it's your DNA. You come from a legacy, a tradition. But, but I look at life differently now where it's like, you know what? I just feel blessed that I had the opportunity to be, to experience at that level and that platform to say, hey man, I worked with Dwayne Johnson, I worked with Hulk Hogan, worked with Stone Cold, didn't even know at the time it was, now if I went back now, 
you know, I'm, I'm a different man. I'm, uh, things have changed. It's, uh, you know, it comes with age and wisdom, and, and I would be very selective in what I would do because I, I know who I am today, and, and um, I'm settled in that. So, um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, it's interesting, um, you know, because I know you were a huge fan. I know you were a huge oh, fan of man, it. Oh, man, I was just... It was great because when I went to the, my first chiropractic school in Marietta, Georgia, so I went to Life University. Oh, that's right. You started then I went to there. Parker. So when I went to Life, I found main event where all the WCW guys were at. Right. And I was like, so I, I went from like wrestling headquarters of training and seeing all those guys working out there and the, the Nitro girls and everything there. And then when they merged, the that's companies. Right. So it was just like wrestling was just, it was you were, in the, you, were in the, you were in the backyard of WCW. Were in yeah, Atlanta. Right there, that was yeah. Ted Turner's uh, yeah, deal there. Yeah, that's where Lex owned the gym and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so, I remember you talking about Sean O'Hare and Palumbo oh, and, and the yeah, National Born Thrillers. You were yeah, and Johnny I mean, the Bull. Buff, Buff Bagwell yeah. and those guys. So, and uh, yeah, so it was just fun times and it always plays a part of my life. So I appreciate you. Where can everybody find you if they want to look you up, see what you're doing? Okay, so yeah, and real quick, Chris, I want to just, if I can interject this oh, yeah, real quick. So, so I'm new at social media, yeah. guys. Okay, I, 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 I do a lot of Facebook Live as some yeah. of the followers know. Uh, but I'm developing a new brand, Chris. And, and the reason why I came out here to Dr. Axe's first, this, this um, seminar mm -hmm. here, by the way, I'm very impressed with this place, yeah, the right. headquarters and everything. Um, and I, and I, I've, I've gotten a feel for Dr. Axe and Dr. Pete. And of course, I've known you for, for a long time. So you guys are stand up, successful chiropractors with a vision and a, and a purpose. And that's what I'm always talking about, guys, in, in my, some of my, my life feeds to you, is uh, having a purpose, having a vision, and, and, and follow, following that with passion. For me, it's interesting because my Dr. Ash, sorry, Dr. Axe talked about finding your passion and your strengths. And for me, um, I'm just saying, I've had my challenges and struggles with actually actual practice. I have good hands, I adjust well, but my, my passion is speaking. I love to be in front of a camera. I love yep. media. I love to get my, my message out to as many people as I can because I feel like I'm gonna pierce hearts and souls much more effectively that way. So I'm developing a new brand called the Dr. Sean brand. And it's going to be a cross between a little bit of Tony Robbins, maybe a little bit of the performer of The Rock. You know, it's it's taking all of my trials and tribulations, it's taking everything and wrapping it up into this next culminated um, chapter. And that is to, uh, I want to put a, a smile on your face, I want to entertain you, make you laugh. But at the end of the day, you may cry, you're going to laugh, but at the end of the day, I want you to have goosebumps and I want to inspire as many people as I can to live a more enchanting, vibrant life. And that's where, that's what I'm developing now. So the handles are, you know, yes. it's, it's at Dr. Sean, at, um, at Dr. Sean 008, D-R-S-H-A-W-N 008. And that goes for Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, a, a Facebook fan page that's just starting up. My YouTube channel, yeah, yeah. Dr. Sean 008. So just follow me there. I'd be very appreciative, and uh, I'll keep you posted. I'm just building content, and you know, come join the journey with me as I grow this thing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you good catching up. So yeah, you man. see, you know, I'm, I have a whole room full of like movers and changers. But when it came to a Facebook Live, who am I going to do it with? I know the person who the camera who lights up the camera the best. So <laughs> thanks so much. So thanks once again for watching 15 Minute Fuel. We'll do another live tomorrow with somebody else. Uh, we're just in 15 minutes a day. We'll fuel your mind, your body, and your future. God bless. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Chris. I was kind of ranting there a little bit. Too. I went down some rabbit holes.